Good afternoon or good morning, everybody, wherever you guys are at. We're here again on the Point of Blue. And today, as our guest, we have Mr. Koa. We have a jack of all trades with Mr. Koa playing the hand pan and has many numerous interests. But today, we are going to kind of dive into back and forth convo on diet, the food industry, FDA, marketing, ingredients of our food both a uh, passion for both of us so we're just gonna dive into it koa so i don't know where we are gonna jump into it so whatever we go hopefully you guys enjoy it here so koa take it away if you want to introduce yourself awesome. or dive right into it for sure for sure hi everybody my name is koa thank you so much for having me absolutely Lou. i appreciate it yes. i've been uh, waiting to be here and you know we've gone back and forth so much this past year on different topics within the food industry mm -hmm. and it's just something that I feel very passionate about and it's because of how I have transformed my own life with food mm -hmm. and I feel very passionate about it and it's it's been a year of a lot of trial and error and experimentation with many different foods and diets and cleanses and you know I want to bring it to the table and bring some things to light mm -hmm. and with someone who's as passionate about it as I am. Yes, I know we've gone into numerous things. I know one thing you you also mentioned that I didn't mention in the beginning was the cleansing and fasting. I don't know if you want to save that for now or later, or if we're going to kind of go ham on mm -hmm. what cleansing and fasting is actually. Maybe we should save it. I think so, because yeah, I feel like everyone's going to freak out of, definitely. okay, no food for like three, four days. <laughs> how the heck do you do that? So we'll tap into fasting at the end. For sure, for sure. Um, how did your journey begin? And actually, which what is something shocking to me, which hopefully you don't mind me sharing. I know you said when you were younger, you were much more heavy set, mm -hmm. And when you told us that, I, I was shocked, because you have a very lightweight physique and i always thought you know you're one of those people that was always like that born with that that genetic physique and when you told me that and i think you showed us a picture if i'm not mistaken Definitely. and i was just jaw dropped so did this awakening into diet food industry transform when you lost all that weight or is it even after that phase how did it kind of oh how yeah how did it reach you i guess to say oh, sure for sure um great question so <laughs> yeah growing up i i was not a great eater i ate a lot of junk food mm -hmm. and i uh, didn't really care what i was putting into my body and it didn't come until college i felt like i was this new person when i went away to college i felt like this is the time for a fresh start so I became more mindful, but still wasn't eating great. You know, there were, there were those late night ramens and you know how, how college is. Of and, course. You know, as a freshman and, and sophomore in college, living in the dorms, you know, there was no stove or anything really. So it was anything I could put in the microwave. And it, it wasn't really apparent to me the effect that food was having on my body, mm -hmm. on my, my physical state and also my mental state. And... It wasn't until after college when I went vegan mm. for the first time and that changed my life. Mm. Going vegan really changed my life and throughout college I started dropping weight. I started dropping so much weight and then after college I dropped even more weight and this was just changing my food. Uh, changing my diet, what was going into my body. This was no exercise at all. Wow. I never went to the gym once in college. Wow. I was afraid of the gym. So in that transition, how much do you think you lost just in that, just in diet alone? I mean, I would say over a long span, maybe 30, wow. 30 pounds maybe. That's awesome. Yeah. So were you full carnivore before transitioning to vegan? Yeah, I didn't care. Oh, uh, so you just went cold turkey. Yeah. And then... Do you feel also, I feel as if the term vegan is very loosely held, meaning there's people that practice veganism in the very wrong way. Mm -hmm. So it's not really fully plant-based. It's a lot of just substitute chemicals, substitute mixtures of random stuff to make it taste like meat and the avoidance of just really pure fruits and veggies. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you also did it the right way in that first transition? So in the first transition, I actually did not. I, I was eating a lot of salads and loading up on veggies, but mm. I was still eating like frozen veggie burgers and things like that, which 
was filled with chemicals. I, I didn't become a label freak, as I like to call mm. it. I started becoming obsessive with reading labels. I would say that didn't come until this last year, about a hmm. year ago, I will say. Um, maybe more or less a year. Okay. Um, prior to that, my veganism started to... It was fluctuating. Like It was slowly getting better in terms of the chemicals mm. that I was ingesting in my body. I became more aware. I've always loved salad. I've always loved fruits and vegetables. So I didn't feel like I was having to give up anything and replace it with something that I didn't like. Mm. I really I really enjoy fruits and vegetables. I love them even more now than ever. So Because I think you know also how your body is feeling after you ingest it. Because as a kid, I was like, I didn't eat any of that. I mean, we scratch that. We were heavy on fruits. I wasn't heavy on veggies at all. I was that kid that if we went out to eat, it would be either chicken tenders or white rice, mm-hmm. like the simplest basic flavors. Uh, mozzarella sticks yeah, and chicken Literally tenders. the easy things that you can't go wrong with at a restaurant. You weren't, as a kid, you didn't want to try flavors and mixes and different seasonings. It was nonsense. But seeing what what it does to the body, how you feel psychologically, um, emotionally, energy levels as well, once you eat those foods... I think is what also makes us crave it more. Because like you said, I'll see something tempting. I'm like, okay, that looks good, but I know I'm going to feel like utter crap Mm -hmm. after Mm -hmm. eating that. And I'm like, no, I crave the fresh juices, the fresh greens, because your body knows what it's about to get from that. So the visual aspect of that salivation of good foods, I think once you're actually awake of what it contains, it shifts how your brain is perceiving Mm -hmm. that in the eye motion. You know, it's kind of like we eat with our eyes. I think there's such a transformation when you really know what's in those foods that are healthy because your body talks to you. It tells you, hey, I'm I'm feeling this mineral mineral or this water or this food. Your body literally talks to you in that exchange. Absolutely, it does. Mm -hmm. And the more I became more aware and more mindful of the food I was eating, the better the relationship I had with Mm -hmm. The fresh fruits and vegetables and especially when I moved here to South Florida I started to have just this amazing relationship with the fruits and Hmm. they were growing right on the trees you know mango season comes around avocados falling from the tree the best yeah it's just it's just amazing and I I really felt that what I was getting was pure and I wanted to start treating my body better because you know when you're young you don't really care and you don't know too it's just you whatever you're taught you go by it exactly exactly and you're not really thinking about you're not really thinking about what's in the food because food is such a social cultural experience Mm. when you're with your friends when you're with your family you don't want to deny yourself food especially if somebody's cooking it from the heart with love even though it could have a bunch of processed chemicals in it it's almost like a guilt that you feel because you don't want to turn it down. That's true. And it's like we're offending them as mm-hmm. well. I think that's huge in that regard. Because, yeah, I know in my transition, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, it was that blockage of those social gatherings. But, okay, well, what am I going to go do there? Like, go eat this, go eat that. And so what I would do is I would eat before and maybe do, like, an appetizer that was, like, semi-healthy just to be able to socialize. Mm-hmm. Because you eventually, not intentionally, you're not doing it in a rude manner to like cut that off. But I feel like when you're first awakening into that and you realize what's in the restaurant business and the food industry, you realize it's 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 not loaded with anything you really need for the most part. So it blocks off that social, you know, gatherings in a way for you. So I think having that balance is very important as well. Absolutely. I find that balance is everything. The balance is is so important because, of course, if you're eating bags of chips every single day and you know how I am with my with my chips. I know me too. That's my guilty pleasure. So, so chips has been the biggest, I would say, I, I don't know, theme of this last year. And I've had such a love hate relationship with chips because They're just so good and so addicting and they're at every single gathering and they're so easy and it's just amazing because there's a big bowl of chips and everybody can (laughs) share it together and crunch on it and it's just so much love around these chips, right? (laughs) But when you look at the back, it's not love at all. At all. The ingredients are not love. It is 
processed oils and, and not the good kind of oils either. And I think that's what I want to bring light. I'm not here to bash or no. judge anybody's um, diets or, or what they eat. I think it's really just about making people aware and educating people on the good oils, the bad mm. oils, what ingredients are good for us and bad for us. Like if you don't know what an ingredient is on the back of something, I guess my my biggest problem with it is how can we put things into our body that we don't know what it is? Absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking of the oils, and if we want to mention a few to them, I know some of the killer ones that are in almost literally everything is you have the sunflower oil, you have the canola oil, you have all these other processed oils. I know we're starting to see more brands and companies start to use coconut oil, um, avocado oil. I know some things would have olive oil depending. It's more rare. But also I think people don't take into account the amount of heat that's used with these oils. So olive oil is one of those oils that can go rancid once it reaches a temperature so everyone thinks it's healthy but if you go ahead and cook with olive oil on a pan or whatever method you got to be mindful of what heat it's reaching mm -hmm. because it'll just go rancid and there goes the properties that that olive oil has absolutely now i know i don't know if you want to mention a couple i know those are the main ones what else sure. comes to mind that you know i think just some of the main ones that i look out for is canola oil yeah. sunflower oil uh even other things that I'm not really familiar with, like grapeseed oil, mm. just other things that I, I don't know, you just see all these oils being thrown in and I, and I see them being thrown into things that don't even require need it. They don't exactly. need it. Exactly. You know, it's kind of strange to me. Why are we eating things like, I, I don't know, I, my biggest discovery this year was with nut milk, mm. um, all different kinds, oat milk, almond milk, cashew milk. You look into it and some of them have oils canola oil inside of these nut milks and all of these other things guar gum xanthan gum what is the deal with these gums man yep. <laughs> because then you'll look at an option that's completely clean and it tastes good if not better and it's like okay if they can do it why is this other company not doing exactly. it and i think a, a, pro, a i mean you mentioned chips so i think one reason is whether it's consistency whether it's flavorings whether it's also the way the expiration date can be extended with certain ingredients as preservatives um but it's crazy how much they sell us on those things simply because of those few factors even if you look at things with colorings it's like why but people again eat with their eyes so mm -hmm. they add i've seen when i used to eat fish back then salmon they would add a pink color to salmon and i would be like why is that necessary that salmon's gonna taste exactly the same with or without that coloring mm -hmm. but the way people eat with their eyes it makes them grab it more exactly but like you said what's the point of having these extra ingredients to it it's not necessary it's not necessary at all and it's and it's you know the more i discover about food and and what real whole raw natural foods are and what they do for the body and how we basically mutilate these foods and 100%. we completely transform them into something it's not even food uh it's it's disturbing to me it mm. actually is disturbing to me it makes me sad because you know i have a family and i have friends and it's just very i want everyone to be living their absolute best selves through what they eat and i believe that we are a, di a direct product of mm. what we are consuming a thousand percent i couldn't agree more and i think the best for me the best example you can try to give someone is you see everybody you know a lot of people are about cars driving quality cars it's like what kind of gas are you going to put in your in your bentley what kind of gas are you going to put in your rolls royce you're not going to put that cheap gas mm -hmm to run a beautiful fancy car that has long longevity right so it's the equivalent for us it's like we're doing that with the things we own but we're not even doing it with our own human vessel how mind-blowing is that and we spend endless money on those things that we don't need so those things are going to at some point cease to exist if you don't even have your own vessel healthy because none of that's going to buy your health back mm -hmm. and to me it's an investment you I know finances are the realest thing to all of us. And 
price can be an issue, but I personally don't believe eating healthy is pricey. There's been a time that someone that I know went to McDonald's and they told me how much they were going to pay for a burger. And I'm like, oh my God, you could have bought a huge juice with that or a beautiful salad with that. Mm -hmm. Not a burger with fries that has absolutely zero nutrition because after you eat that, you're going to still be hungry because your body wants the minerals and vitamins, not the physical substance. Mm -hmm. So you can eat two, three of those burgers and still be literally starving because your body didn't get what it wants. Right, Right. But that's kind of that comparison of... You know, you want to put good oil in your car and last a long time and smoothly, you know, live for a while or start to break down and literally just it's a slow, poisonous death is what we're exposed to, unfortunately. Well, it absolutely is. And you read my mind with with the finances, Mm. that that part of it. I think a lot of people make excuses. I I think that that is the truth of this whole industry and this way of being, I think there's a lot of food is such a taboo subject. Mm. People don't like to talk about it. They don't want to know. They don't want to know what's in their food. They just want to eat it. They don't want to be told. Uh, and I feel like that is that is not the way to live. I feel like you should want to know what you're putting in your body. You know, just like you said with the cars, mm. you're very mindful about what we buy material wise and, and the gas you're putting in your vehicle but what about your own vehicle, the mm-hmm. own vessel that we're driving? And I agree with you. I think I think it's very I've been trying to to find a way to navigate this with mm-hmm. my friends and my family without coming off as judgmental or preachy that, you know, because I've been there. I've been on both sides. Absolutely. True. And I know which side is better. Mm. And I feel confident in saying that because food has just changed everything about my mindset, my, hmm. my uh, you know, the physicality, everything. It's very amazing what food has done for me in my life. Uh, it, it absolutely affects your vibration and that your vibration sure. affects your frequency. And you're able to manifest and attract things into your life mm. because of the food that's giving you this energy and that energy is is it's clean you, it's too clean, very clean mm-hmm. pure energy and you know of course there's discrepancies with is it organic is it not with the labels and that's a whole other, yeah. other thing too i believe personally if you're eating whole natural foods if it's not organic do the best you can do the best you can i completely agree because who knows that's another thing i fumble with and i didn't want to interrupt you but mm-hmm that point you you know do you trust it saying organic or not based off of the definition of organic when you look what the fda bases to be able to use that word and labeling it has its description but then it makes you wonder because you see other other goods trademarked as natural or this or that and unfortunately if someone doesn't really know the industry and know how the system works they fall for it. So when they see natural or when they see certain labels on it, they're like, okay, this is what it says. I'm going to grab it. But instead of flipping that box or flipping that bag and really reading the ingredients, they will not know better that that has just amount as crap as Mm -hmm. something that's labeled not organic. I mean, excuse me, not natural. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's tricky. So I really feel as if, if you could do the best you can and if finances are a thing or you just are simply not aware I think instead of looking at those titles of organic, natural, this, that, uh, this raised, that raised, simply just look at the ingredients. If it's whole natural ingredients that you can read, that you can understand, you're pretty much decently safe, at least more than other stuff. But once you see a compilation or a whole paragraph of stuff, don't even waste your time. I mean, some things literally have novels of ingredients. Literally. It's like, I laugh. Mm -hmm. Because I like to go to the store and... This is just, I like to go to the store and look at the ingredients. It's fun. It's like a whole field trip. Yeah, It is. It's a field trip. And, you know, I think it it wouldn't bother me so much if I didn't see the deception going Mm. on in the food industry today. You see grocery stores and, I mean, how many aisles are there of things wrapped in plastic and and things that are processed and then a small little produce section off to the back corner? Yeah. It just doesn't make really any sense to me we i mean there's like 20 30 aisles in a grocery store of just things that are 
wrapped in plastic how how is it not going bad how can mm. you what kind of preservatives why are you having preservatives it just doesn't make sense how we as a country got so lazy mm. and then i start to question the integrity of the food industry as we all know the food industry is very deceptive and i say that because the things on the ingredient labels my favorite is natural flavors and who knows what is in that it can literally be a mixture of a hundred things and we will never know what it consists of and absolutely and why even label it as natural flavors I don't get it's it. deception yes and they're doing it on purpose so then when i see things like that and anybody can see that this this information is available for everybody absolutely it, it's out there it's available it's ready and i just wonder what is going on and i believe personally that the reason there is so many processed foods and fast food is so prevalent in prevalent in our country and in our society is because that food dumbs us down mm. it lowers our vibration it puts you to sleep it puts us to sleep when you're lazy and lethargic and you're feeling bloated you don't have time to be making moves yes. and changing the world a thousand percent it's literally a slow numbing uh -huh. agent. It is. And by the time your body even has a time to digest that, you have energy for nothing else you exactly. want to do. Exactly. And then you want to sleep and then you're yeah, you're you're very demotivated and um th and that brings about a bunch of other issues. The eating these foods on a regular basis, which so many people do eat eat fast food and they eat it all day every day. It's all they're putting in their body. Or eating Fruit Loops for breakfast. Yes. You know. As kids, we ate cereal like a of crazy course, person. Of and course. I kid you I not. I love my Toa. Cookie Crisp. The, oh my God. Cookie Crisp, Fruity Pebbles, Pops. Uh -huh. Literally Don't everything. Don't even get me started with Captain Crunch. Oh like, my come gosh. On now. I love, Fruit Loops. I love it all. And I'm not. I, but I, I'm so aware of how bad it is. Yeah. It's but we didn't sugar. know at that time. But that's what mm. makes us wonder. I remember being young and I would eat literally two, three bowls of that Koa. I'm like, why am I still hungry? This doesn't make any sense. I had three bowls of this cereal. Like I should be good. But no one tells us that it's straight up sugar. Mm. Straight up sugar. Straight up sugar. And, and you're a growing kid too. Growing, that needs so much. Well, children have diabetes yeah. at the age of 10, 11, 12 years old. The onset of diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure yeah. by their teenage years. Yeah. Um, I'm an ex-teacher, as you know. Mm. And in school, I would see eighth grade students bringing in bags of like family size bags of Cheetos and oh. Cheez-Its. And I mean, at eight o'clock in the morning, wow. donuts. And don't even get me started. And that's starting the day like Starting that. the day like that. And parents that don't know any better to allow their children to start their day like this, going to school. Yeah. And they don't know any different. Mm -hmm. And they think vegetables and fruits, they think they're absolutely disgusting. Yeah. They're repulsive. They won't eat them. They won't touch them. They would see me with my salads all ah. freshly made every single day. Religiously, I had my salad uh, loaded with vegetables and every single day and mm -hmm. never got tired of it and uh they always said it was disgusting like mm -hmm. they would make fun of me for eating that way and i think this goes into another topic of we as a society label people as health nuts and yeah. when, when people want salad and start to go on these diets it's like we've almost lost our way from that's just how we've been that's normal that's what's actually that's normal that's what you do that's what you survive off of you're in a village mm -hmm. you go pick the fruits whatever you're growing on your trees on your shrubs whatever you've planted uh -huh. grains uh veggies whatever you have uprooting at that point although i think it was so different then and i think and i don't want to veer you off that but the soil and the way things were grown are so different then than they are now because I feel like there's a lot of heat with grains now and to avoid certain amount of grains or legumes or if the legumes are not sprouted which for those that don't know what sprouted means it's the way nuts and seeds are soaked in water before eating because there is a specific ingredient uh phytic acid I almost forgot I don't know if you're familiar with phytic acid but that legumes and nuts have a lot of, which can block the absorption of other nutrients yes. and minerals. So naturally, back then, all the, the nuts and seeds would be soaked. My parents, even 
Middle Eastern background, before they ate almonds, they would soak them in water uh-huh. the night before. And I'd be like, oh, I don't get it. But you realize a tradition that's passed down and the reasoning behind that. Like, that's healthy. So you'll see on labels now, sprouted bread, sprouted this, sprouted that. People don't know what that means. They have no idea. But also, it was so different then. And like you said, being labeled health nuts, mm-hmm. where that's who we are at nature. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And it's there there are these things to look out with and yes the soil may not be the same yes we talk a lot about our primitive ancestors and this kind of primitive way of living where we could just eat things out of the dirt and not even Hmm. wash it off and and that's fine and i think that yes soil composition has changed over time there's a lot more pollution than there was back in the day um due to the industrial revolution Hmm. and different things you know there's um carbon monoxide there's radiation there's a bunch of different things so yes i do think that it's it's more digestible too when you rinse things and when you wash them and let them soak it, it gets the outer coat off yes. of this you know to make it um easier for your gut but our gut is our second brain mm, absolutely and and that is why it affects our vibration and our frequency that's why it thumbs us down and and they know it. Mm. They are well aware of it. And by they... The hierarchy of, course. of, of the world. <laughs> of it's, course. A, it's a control mechanism. And then we wonder why we're so flooded with cancers, with diseases, mm-hmm. with diabetes, with heart attacks, with cholesterol, high cholesterol, blockages in all these arteries. It's from 20, 30, 40, 50 years of eating this that people are like, oh, I felt good and now I, I have this. When did this happen? It didn't just happen. It's showing up now after years of just poorly, I don't even know how to really explain it mm-hmm. in, in the easiest sense, but just a not well-suited diet. God knows how many years on the individual. Sure. And then put on top of that the emotional distress we deal with on a mm-hmm. daily basis or how fast-paced we are in this world. And I think that's another reason you mentioned you know, so many people eating fast food every day. Mm-hmm. And we live in this world that we're excessively fast paced right so let's say a typical household in america you have your kids your husband your wife work trying to make ends meet to feed everybody to put a roof over their head that no one has time to make these home cooked meals even though some things may not take long at all to be honest if you're quick you just heat up the oven or the toaster oven throw something in there for five ten minutes and you're ready Mm -hmm. or pre prepare it you know but I think we are in such a privileged world that we've become very lazy and that trickles into the preparation of our food and the knowledge about our food that we're so hungry, we're so tired, just give me anything so I can continue on this rat race we're in. Yes, so, and impatient. Yeah. Very yes, impatient. We very don't want to wait for things anymore. We're like, where's our food? Why isn't it yes. here now? We want everything and we want everything now. And that's why you see these fast food like for example dunkin donuts it's like on the go like keeps yes. america running you know and and people's logos are kind of gearing towards that it's there. like a sub- subliminal message uh-huh. that's being put out so you see yeah. that every time on the commercials or driving uh-huh. past it so it's automatically imprinted in your mind sure. sure very true and it's all subliminal everything mm. on food packaging everything and what's being these chemicals that they're putting in in the foods are very addictive for your yes, brain too. These yes. are feel good chemicals, mm. and you get you get that. That's why you can't just eat one chip. The Doritos and all those things, you would eat half a bag because of, forget about. That's it. the thing. It's not even that you're. Excuse me. That it's not that you're a fat ass. It's not that you're super hungry. Uh-huh. They are addictive, and food is equivalent to cocaine, right. to alcohol, whatever right. people have their addiction to. Food is a whole nother poison yes. if it's mishandled. Yes, absolutely is, and and a lot of people. That's which is a very touchy subject, but there's a there is. The U.S. leads in the world's eating disorders. Mm. The most eating disorders out of anywhere in the world wow. the, is he, right here in the U.S., um, along with obesity yep. and other many foodborne illnesses and things like that. Of course, you have undeveloped countries that deal with other Absolutely. food illness in a different way, though. Different um, manner. Mm-hmm. You would think for as evolved as we are as a society, um, technologically Quote, and everything, unquote. that we wouldn't need. We're, we're using it. To our disadvantage, yes. pumping mass in in you know just fertilizers and and pesticides hormones. And, and hormones on yes. the crops and feeding the animals and look, 
I have fluctuated. I was straight vegan for a while, and then I incorporated fish into my diet, wild fish, things like that. I became okay with. Um, these days, I'm more plant based okay. than anything, and I would say about eighty five percent raw. But I think at the end of the day, these labels they don't really matter. Mm. I believe if you're vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, it doesn't matter. A word that I really, really like that I have just come across is intuitive eating. A Mm, phrase, rather. I like that. The idea of intuitive eating. Mm. Giving your body what it needs, no more, no less. And and keeping it natural. Keeping it, it whole. It doesn't mean... I still don't think in any capacity eating candy bars or skittles or anything like that is okay that's a personal yeah that's a personal view i don't believe that that's okay for the body in any form of the chemicals because i believe that nature mother earth gives us everything we want we have sweet we have savory Mm. if you want something sweet you can make date you can make it into syrup um blend yep. up some dates in a food processor honey everything with some honey i know i got you on dried figs oh, you were obsessed with those so for a good. while you got me yes. on dried figs for the first but time it's, that's the sweet that's the sweet yeah. shock that our bodies are looking for like you said it's giving uh-huh. it to us and i'd rather eat too many figs than too many snickers bars or too Amen. many skittles yeah i would rather eat too many dates because yeah you may have a stomach ache but it's not like there's anything chemical or processed yeah. in it and i think that that is what we need to come back to as a society. I agree. It's coming back to our roots because I feel like we don't remember what it's like to feel good. Many people, and I say we as a collective consciousness. Thousand percent. Thousand percent. And I think that's the disheartening part because people as ourselves that have, I don't like the word diet. It's just mm-hmm. a way of life. And I think the reason we we want to share this information with people is because I don't think I don't think even 70% of the people in this world know the capacity of how good they can actually feel, that know the capacity of happiness, of energy, of aliveness that their bodies can encompass. And so what happens is they become numb. So there's a point where my diet has fluctuated many times during the years. I've, I experiment a lot. Um, now mostly it's vegetarian based. Not full vegan. I haven't really fully gotten there yet. I, I'm not sure where I want to go with it. I'm Like you said, intuitive eating. I'm really mm-hmm. trying to listen to my body. And when I've removed stuff or removed meat or seafood, I've had to find ways to supplement whatever those food would provide. So for me, let's say it would be iron or I got anemic. I have this iron water, which is a really clean source that I found. I have to show you. It's called, I think it's Spatone. If I'm not mistaken, it's literally a uh, spring water with iron in it. Okay. That's all it is. So I felt so much better because withdrawing that red meat, I did become very lethargic. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. To go back, it's oh my god, where was I going? With that? I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> Dang. All good, all good. Okay, well you were going with intuitive eating. I don't know where. Did I was you eat going breakfast with today? I did. I did. What did I have? Yes, I did. Okay. I well, I didn't eat breakfast. So what I've been doing? Mm-hmm. Dang, Intermittent I, fasting. Yes. Yeah, so is this what? Where I, we're going? No, I didn't mean. Okay. Well, now that we're on it, we might as well because okay, I okay. lost my train of thought. Sure. I think this is a so, topic that that needs to be touched on. Okay. Let's I think go. Fasting is is just something that we should talk about. Let's I agree. bring it to light, whether it's for a minute or five or ten. Okay. Let's I do think it. So many people with with fasting culture yes. these days. Everybody is fasting, fasting, fasting. They don't want to eat breakfast. They don't want to eat lunch. They want to go 16 to 24 hours or yes. even three days. Yeah. Uh, and and water fasting has become a trend. Yeah. People true. are doing group fasts and, mm. and you know, it's, um, it's very interesting. So I actually attempted a three-day water fast. I've only ever done it once. Okay. I've practiced intermittent fasting for the last couple of years. Okay. Um, What's your definition of intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is not eating past 8 p.m. Okay. And breaking your fast 16 to 20 hours later. Okay. That's intermittent fasting to me. Okay. So maybe around 12 or 1 p.m. breaking your fast. Gotcha. After, but not having anything go in your stomach Through the at night. 8 p.m. Which I find is the best in general because... I get the best sleep when I don't have any food in my stomach. Like, yes, yeah. you may fall asleep hungry, but you will fall asleep. That's true. That's the beauty of it. Mm. Whereas, I mean, how many times have have you or I eaten late 
And, and you're just like, oh, and you well, depending wake on what you up. eat, too. It depends on what you depending eat. On what you if eat. it's something heavy, yeah, you're going to have Of course, if you're eating a bowl of fruit at midnight just because you're hungry and you want to, you know, um, satiate, then it's different. Yes, true. So, but, uh, you know, if you're eating greasy food or chips late at night and staying up, then that's a whole other, mm-hmm. whole other thing. So I think that fasting, just like dieting and anything like that, again, I agree with you. I, I don't like the word diet, mm. um, but I think it's very personal. It's, yes. it's individual for every person. Their body is different. Mm. Every single human being has a different vessel. It works differently. It processes things differently. And I think, how can you say it's a one size fits all? You can't. With fasting. Have you ever yeah. fasted? So, yes, I, I, I don't even remember the first time I did it. Maybe 10, 11 years ago. That's when I really started like hardcore more nutrition Mm -hmm. away from what the food pyramid told me. You know, what even is the food pyramid? That's a whole nother conversation. What's happened to that? Because that's shifted too. Like I I didn't even realize it because I never paid attention to Mm -hmm. it in the last year. But what they're teaching in schools is no longer the original food pyramid. At all. Is it some circle now that we've split up? (laughs) It's I don't even know. Not I even a at pyramid it. anymore. Oh it's now goodness. a circle. See, we don't. It, and that's the thing is, is information is always changing uh-huh. as well. But to go back to that, I think I did the first one many moons ago. There were a couple. I probably started with a twenty-four hour water fast, and then I've done quite a few three and four day water fasts. Sure. So I've done probably between five and ten the last like I don't know how many years. Um, the farthest I've gotten was four days, mm-hmm. just water, meaning okay. no juice, no coffee, no nothing. I know there's people that have done it different ways. For me, you can get benefits in, in many other ways, but you for said no water, no, no, excuse me, water. water, no juice, no mm-hmm. coffee, no Same. nothing, no watermelon, nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, to me that if I was going to do something to such an extreme, it was going to be all or nothing, mm-hmm. but it's heavy on the body and sure. not, it's not suited for everybody, especially excuse me, especially if you have a lot of health issues or diabetes. You got to be careful of your sugar dropping. You got to be careful of your blood pressure dropping. Sure. You have to, if you've never done it before, you should be with someone doing it. And listen again, listen to your body when it's ready to tap out. Don't do it to reach a day or an hour. You need to tap out. Right. Most right. I've done was four days water fasting because every time by that fourth day, it would, it would fluctuate. First day, you have the, the hunger groans. Second day, a little bit better. The stomach growling calms down. Water, water, water. In the second day, I would get lethargic. Third day, I would get the energy. And then fourth day, I would get very dizzy. And mm-hmm. because I've had history of either low blood pressure or anemia, I think that fourth day was just, okay, I'm scared I'm going to pass out. I'm scared I'm going to faint. I'm tapping out. Mm-hmm. And I would break it whether it was a strawberry watermelon the most simple food you can get um and i've done it numerous times i've done it when i was in school before i've done it while i was working and it's not great to do it in that because it is a very spiritual experience as well where you really want to reserve that energy for you yourself don't people work out the first day or two i've done that after the first day or two i don't because my body is just out but for some people, they can go ham at the gym on day three and day four. And good for them. Like, so, listen to your body. Right. That's what it boils down right, to. Because right. also by day four, I want to say, it depends how far into the fast you go into. Because it goes into first losing, or excuse me, burning the water weight. Mm-hmm. Then it goes into, um, there's different layers. So at some point it hits fat. At some point it hits muscle. Um, so you have to know all the phases of what kicks in at what day of fasting. Sure, sure. And then there's a point in time too, which three days are usually ideal to have it kick in. So that's why I would always try to reach it to four because there's points where it starts to eat off a cyst. It starts to feed off of diseases. It starts to feed off of different things to get energy because when you're not giving your body that food, it has to get something else. And so that's where the cleansing comes from is because it's refreshing all your cells it's refreshing your gut it's removing everything that's been kept in your intestines for god knows how long and giving your physical body a break from just constant Uh digestion because we're constantly digesting yes constantly yes we live in food culture this is Mm -hmm. this is our world it's surrounded by food you can't go a block without seeing a restaurant Mm -hmm. or a drive-thru or thinking of your next meal as well next meal those days of fasting is like the longest days ever you're like what do i do right i have nothing to prepare 
entire life, of. these four little days is like, uh, yes, Ever, yes. forever. Uh-huh. And because, of course, you're hungry, but you're not thinking of that stuff. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. I've only made it to day three, and then I just realized I I, I was mindful of my body, and Good. I tapped out Good. when I felt like I needed to, because I felt sort of, it has benefits, but I couldn't help but feel there's people literally starving in mm-hmm. the world that mm-hmm. want <laughs> that that would do anything to eat and it just kind of felt wrong being so abundant huh. and fasting it i don't know if that played tricks on my mind huh, that's it, interesting it okay it's kind of yeah it felt kind of wrong to to be like fasting for fun when people are starving and they have no choice but do you think it I can understand where that concept comes from, but don't you think also it can be the complete opposite, meaning let me see what it's like in the day of a life of them so Absolutely. I can be more grateful because sure. I am very spoiled. And that too. See, and yeah, that I too. There's, there's two sides. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, of course, that's definitely one side of it, but the other side was me feeling absolutely horrible. Mm. You know, I, I was ready to tap out. Wow. I was so ready to tap out. Like, I didn't feel good. See, I didn't then, feel the, yeah, well. that's it. Um, however, just two weeks ago, I just finished a juice fast. All right. I just did a four day juice cleanse, nothing but juice. There were six juices a day, so okay. 24 juices total. What kind of stuff did Was it mixed? Was it any particular one? Um, Everyone's different. I know it's a mix of berries, sure. veggies, so, celery. I went through a company called Pure, okay. P-U-R, um, okay. amazing company if anybody's interested. Uh, really great juice mm-hmm. cleanse if you're looking into doing a juice cleanse and not fully going through with fast. Yeah. I wanted to give the juice cleanse a try because fasting just wasn't my shindig. Okay. So I gave the juicing a try and I absolutely loved it. Mm. I've never felt better in my life uh, after I felt with the juice cleanse. Dang. It was amazing. I mean... Just because you're still getting these vital nutrients. Yes. And it's still easy on your digestive system because it's liquid. Yes. So you are still cleansing the colon and um, you're still able to move things through the you're bowel. You're detoxing Yeah, still. you're still mm-hmm. detoxing fully. And I felt for me it was 20 times more effective mm. than a dry fast. And I think that's good. And I think like you said, mm-hmm. as long as you're doing it as a juice and not smoothies, because uh-huh. the only thing that interrupts it is the fiber, then you're exactly. fine. And you're listening to your body at exactly. the end of the day. Exactly. That is awesome. Yeah. And I, I think there's a lot of, this is another topic, but with sugars and fruits and people say, you know, that uh, too much fruit is bad for you. I personally don't believe that. I, I agree. believe there is no such thing as too much fruit. And again, that's programming that is in our mind. I agree completely. That's how I feel. We, there's a lot of programming, uh, government programming um, by the food industry, which is um, part of the government mm. and, and regulated and controlled uh, by the government as such. Mm. And I believe that they'll do anything. They'll do anything to keep us away mm. from what's good for us. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a couple months back, I remember saying if it's approved, if it's or if it's not approved by the FDA, it's probably good for you. It's probably really good for you. Absolutely. So and that's how I feel. And yeah, that might um, that might charge up some people yeah. and it, it might it might make people feel some type of way. But I stand by that. I agree. I if, agree. if I don't I don't trust these regulated systems that we live under i don't trust them and i know what's good for me intuitively and if you the thing is it's intuition but you're you're seeing how Mm -hmm. you're performing your life yes you're seeing how you're feeling in your body what more evidence do you need but that like you said organic not organic whatever whatever feels right in you your body is gonna tell you as long as you stay connected to Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. and you realize this is your guide Mm -hmm then you're not going to be steered wrong, in my oh, opinion. Absolutely, yeah. to everything. As long as you're connected in your body, and it's all connected because your gut, your gut is connected to your brain mm. and your digestive system, just the way your body moves and, and, and your breathing, everything mm. is connected. 100%. So if you're connected to your own physical being, you will know intuitively what is good for you and what your body needs. Mm. But I think people eat, people eat, so much shit mm. for so long that they lose touch yes they just lose touch that's why also they don't get the pains that we get so if i eat something mm. unhealthy my stomach oh. immediately like sure, i'm sure. nauseous i'm like i can't even if it's a bite a bite or two my body knows 
immediately. Mm -hmm. And the thing with these people, I'm like, oh, I feel fine. What are you talking about? But it's become, they become so numb after so many years that that's normal to their body then. But, and I think another part too is, is a spirituality part of it. And you mentioned, um, the fasting for you after 8 PM to around 12, one that next day. So that's something I've been doing. I want to say since like maybe February Mm -hmm. or January, I don't recall. Uh, most of this year already, where I would do 20-hour fasting, four-hour window, meaning in that four-hour window of eating, you can eat whatever you want. Obviously, still be smart, eat good, but quantity-wise, you listen to your body. And I realized through all that, I I just kind of came up with it. Like, I didn't look it, into it. I just was telling myself, okay, I'm going to go from nighttime till after work when I finish five, whenever I come home, feast. And when I started reading into it, looking into it, it's actually called a warrior fast. So there's different sure. uh, ratios. So there's 16, 18, 20, whatever mm-hmm. vibes with your body. Um, and so I decided to go with that. And that one was called the warrior fast. I'm like, oh, my God, I like this. Sure. The name of it itself. Read more. And when you really compare it to, again, hunter-gatherer days. Mm-hmm. They didn't have a fridge for them to just uh-huh. open up and eat whenever they wanted. Exactly. You hunt your food, you prepare your food all day. Once you get your food, they all feast at mm-hmm. night. And that's where the initiation of the name of a warrior fast would come because you're there trying to find your food sure. all day and you finally sit down and it's like the last supper mm-hmm. kind of feast. Absolutely. Because you don't know when you're going to be eating next. Yes. They didn't know. And yes. that's why when, when they did feast, it was so sacred yes. to sit around with your loved ones mm-hmm. and to feast off of this this game that you just hunted and killed and, and in a sacred way. Yes. Not in the malicious way that we exist exactly. just to hunt. Exactly. Absolutely. They were really hunt like actually hunting because they need to survive mm-hmm. and feed their families. Absolutely. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And that's why I don't have a problem with people who eat meat. I have a problem with the way that it's produced. A thousand percent. With the way that they're that they're slaughtered, with the yes. way it's done. I have a serious issue with that. And actually when I went vegan, when I went plant based, it wasn't even it wasn't an ethical thing for me at first. It wasn't. Mm. It wasn't for the animals. Whereas most people do it for the for animals. For me, it was the animals more sure. than anything. That's why I've kind of left yes. dairy, which is still not totally. But mm-hmm. for me, initially, like just animal, animal. It was just it animal, was for animal. The animals. Well, and and again, and I think the reason that you go plant based, uh, I think that that's correlated with how you how you eat and what kind of vegan foods you mm. eat because if you're just doing it for the animals you don't care it's reckless I've seen some of the most it's reckless some of because the most, as long as it's yes. vegan I don't care what chemicals are in Oreos it. Oreos are vegan exact, Oreos so y'all are can vegan. munch out on Oreos exactly. all day and that's quote unquote exactly the misinterpretation of vegan being healthy and the government the is taking advantage of that by slapping vegan on a label Co- all these restaurants it's like straight fried food uh-huh. when it's all but vegan, it's vegan. You put the V yeah. and people are sold. Yep. They don't want to, they don't care to look at it. But I now, I question everything. I say Think for way. yourself and question everything. Yep. I always look at everything and if it has a V, okay, well, mm. what is in it? Why, why is it vegan? How is it vegan? I want to know what's in it. And yeah. that's why ultimately I ended up just cooking that's all my it. food for myself. I you hardly know, go out. You know what's mm-hmm. in it at the end of the day. Yeah, and you have a relationship with... I tried to shop at the uh, local farmer's market and I develop a relationship with the vendors. And Supporting know, them. Yeah, you support mm-hmm. local. You develop a relationship. You put that love and intention into your food. You prepare it at your home and you eat it. And I feel like that also has an impact on your energy, on your vibration, yes. on your frequency. Yes. If Things are being packaged and handled in a factory. How do you know the linemen aren't having a shitty day? How do you know they're not going through something and they're just throwing it around on the line and you don't know how it's actually physically being handled either? It's true. Or what if the you don't even know if the farmer's pissed off about yeah. his day you, and you he's will just never know. grabbing the berries or you don't actually know? So I feel like the energy aspect. That's is huge. Huge. I think that's another part of the avoidance of animals because when you look at the way they're slaughtered in these slaughterhouses not only is it god off little witness like if you witness that you're not gonna want to eat the meat that you're eating exactly. we're just again ignorance is bliss and right. i get it we've all done it it's never judging anyone for their way of life of course but also learning and being open to awaken to that side because then what that animal's feeling and that torture they are going through is now being passed on to us. Dead or alive, that's being passed yes. on to our body. So everything is energy, right? Depending on 
the people you're hanging out with, your friends, your family, the person you're sleeping with, the things you're eating or mm-hmm. creatures you're eating. Everything is an energy exchange. It's Everything. a give and take. And so find that equilibrium or find that healthy equilibrium of what you're ingesting. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that's a hu- that was another aspect for me of blocking out the animals because mm-hmm. I would always say if I were ever a hunter-gatherer, like, I'll eat the meat. Meat's delicious. Who's going to say meat's not delicious? But I would never in my life be able to slaughter an animal. Sure. That's agony to me. Again, if it's survival and you have a family to feed, that's probably a whole nother mentality in your mind at that, that time. That we can't even begin to understand. And that's if we're the there, then maybe we can. Different. Yep. Of but course. I don't think we need to now. No, we we're don't. at this day and age that you have endless options of all these fruits and veggies at your access, not having to go to any farm, mm-hmm. not having to travel, grocery store, and you got everything you need. I don't think that is needed, sure. but it's it's unfortunate the way these animals and the cruelty that these these animals receive that I think is the most heartbreaking Definitely. part. But are you kidding me? You smell that and you smell the the way these meats are seasoned. It's delicious. And you know what's so interesting? I read this thing the other day. Side note: Before I forget, is we don't crave the meat when we smell that Mm -hmm. it's the seasoning and all the spices which are herbs and plants Mm -hmm. that are used to add this flavor to the meat that we are craving so when you really put it into perspective you're like i'm not craving the meat or that barbecue chicken wing Mm -hmm. it's the damn barbecue sauce and it's the damn seasoning that's being Exactly. Blast it all over these foods. And the thing is, you can make that healthy. Yes. You can make it clean. I've seen them do it with, um, what's the fruit called? Jackfruit yeah, with, with jackfruit mushrooms. Tacos, and I'm like, oh my God, it sounds just like it. The way jackfruit is seasoned. Yes. You can season jackfruit the same way you're going to season a brisket, for, yes. s- for example. And it tastes Same like texture. Mm-hmm. Same kind of like shredded but kind of meat. texture's so, huge. Texture's huge, yes. right? So yes. people, people want that. I think it could go both ways. Some people want that meaty texture, mm. but some people are like, no, this reminds me of meat. I don't want uh, to eat good it. Good point. Depending, and yeah. I am one where I don't really like things to replicate it. Like, I don't like the Impossible Burger. Yeah, I, don't like I mean, that's all burger. chemicals anyways. It's all chemicals. Uh-huh. So. I'm just making sure we're good on time. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, I feel like it's... That's all chemicals. That's all processed. And I don't really, I, I never really craved burgers back in the day. Like it's been, I believe four years now since I've had meat nice. and dairy. So I don't do any meat or dairy fish. If it's wild and in a blue moon, absolutely. If mm. it's humane, I have no issues with it. Again, my issue isn't with what you eat. I believe it all comes down to. So let's just be mindful. Yeah. Let's just be mindful and intuitive about what we're eating, what we're putting in. Absolutely. I don't think that you have to totally discount meat and things like that, you know, because there are humane ways to get it. Absolutely. Um, like you said, it's a sacrifice. It yeah. used to be done in a sacrificial yeah. manner. Take care of that cow. Let them live many years. And when it's their mm-hmm. time, you they go ahead and sure. they feed you. So they're like of paying course. the owner in return. Absolutely. And in, yeah. and in different uh, Native American indigenous tribes, mm. this sacred to eat uh, bison or buffalo or elk. Yep. It's very sacred and they don't look at it that way. Hmm. It's a sacrifice, but it's a beautiful ceremony yeah. that they go through. So the and that goes back to the energy. Hmm. The energy and the intention is pure. It's love. So it's good for them. Yeah. And and I feel that um I, I really do. I, I, yeah. I meant I agree to that. And another thing you had said, if it's not, um, if it's FDA approved or not FDA approved, actually, that you think will be healthy. And this is another thing I've been doing the last years. And I go in and out with it, but it's with coconut oil. And in my mm-hmm. coffee, I never used to be a heavy coffee drinker, but like during a few days of the work week, I'll have it. Sure. But it's not just coffee. I'll add a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of coconut oil. I'll add, I have the, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it. Uh, I forgot the name. Um, but it's a mix of different dried mushrooms, cacao, turmeric. You probably need dirty water. Drink water? Dirty drink water. Something like well, that. No, not dirty water. Are you talking about Live Ultimate? No, I can't think of it. Mushroom? It's a. It's supposed to be a coffee Superfood. substitute. Okay. But I'm not crazy about it by water. itself. Mud mm. water. Boom. Yeah, I think it's mud water. Which I wasn't crazy about in the mm. beginning, but I, I wasn't using it as a coffee substitute. I wanted sure. to add it to my sure, coffee. Sure. So okay. it's a mix of everything. Uh-huh. So my And I'll add raw honey. So my coffees in the morning are like fully loaded, uh-huh. just like blast for the day. Um, you go all in. Uh, oh my God. That's that's how I sustain. And then uh-huh. I'll fast all day until so do you dinner. you drink coffee? 
Yes, during okay. the during the week more, I'll have a few days of it, but I'm not sure. re- like I don't need it. It's just sure. my vessel to have all my other stuff uh-huh. of the coconut oil, the raw honey, and the mixture of the powder. Okay. Um, and then I'll have a dry. I have a bunch of a packet of a superfood dry greens. It has like mm-hmm. fifty different dry greens in there. I'll put a teaspoon of water and I'll drink it. So I'll have that, and then I'll take my coffee to work, and then I'll fast all day till okay. dinner. But where I was going with that is the the healing properties of coconut oil in the brain and its play in Alzheimer's and sure. dementia and how it protects those parts of the brain. And so, yeah, coconut oil has become such a fad, but it is something I was associated with more than five years mm-hmm. ago. Um, and so when you really look at the protection this fat does on the brain, if you're doing it too much or excessively, yes, it can boost your cholesterol, the weight shows on As your blood. Anything. Exactly. So you have to be mindful. Because the last time I went to the get blood work, just to have an idea, uh, they told me I had high cholesterol, which wasn't even that high. It was like 110. <laughs> Whereas my mom's like, that doesn't make sense. High used to be like 200. But there's way a good back and way. bad cholesterol. Yeah, but it was under the bad one, supposedly. Okay. But I'm like, the only thing I'm getting sure. cholesterol from is my coconut oil. I don't have sure. a lot of fried foods. I'll cook with different oils, but that's really it. Mm-hmm. I'm not eating burgers. I'm not eating all this stuff, cheese every blue moon. But I'm like, the only thing that's being read from is my coconut oil. Definitely. But I know what it's also doing to my brain. And if people realize how healing the good fats are mm-hmm. for the brain is a whole nother spiel. But we're categorizing these numbers in this blood work, which makes everyone freak out. Mm-hmm. And then they're not realizing they're eating the bad stuff and that, yeah, the good one's adding it. But if they're mindful of where it's coming from, they can still be in that high range, but healthy. Does that make sense? Definitely. But I'm like, this is such BS. Like, I know what my numbers are coming from. Don't give me any smack for it because I know and what it's doing You know because you know because you're connected. Yes, that is, And that's... And I feel like people go to the doctor and look, don't get me wrong. There is a beautiful balance and harmony between Western medicine and Eastern medicine. Absolutely. Holistic practice and not. I, yes. I believe there is a balance for mm. sure because essential oils isn't going to heal you if you break your, your own. thousand percent. So, you know, I think there is a time balance. and place for it all. There's a time and place for everything. And I think that when we rush to the doctor looking for answers before we change our diet, mm. before we change our lifestyle, Amen. we're looking for answers when it's actually within us, but we're too lazy to yes. make the lifestyle change. That's the thing. They'd rather put them on medication for the high cholesterol uh-huh. or high blood pressure where it's like, yo, just go go jogging for 20 minutes exactly. a day and you're going to see that number drop. Or not even just eliminate one thing out of your diet. Yes. Stop eating so much meat. Yes. If you're eating meat seven days a week, maybe try eating it four out of seven. Absolutely. Absolutely. And maybe eliminate all processed foods. I believe mm. that the answer is within our food. 1, food holds such code. Mm. It has DNA code in it. And it literally. Yes. And it's and it's paired with ours because we're all connected. We are connected to the roots of the earth. Mm. We're connected just like a tree has its roots. And, and forget, uh-huh. I think you use the word paired, but I would say it's being absorbed by uh-huh. us. Like if I'm uh-huh. pouring absorbed. water with an algae or with spirulina on my plant, that plant is literally absorbing right. it. Whether it wants to or not, it's going to absorb it. Yes. And so no matter what we put on our body, it's going to be absorbed. It's going to absorb it. And our skin, yes. just like with, this is a, another thing that I don't want to dip too much into, but just with the things like products that we put on our skin, right. our skin is absorbs everything and it's the largest organ of the body it's the largest organ mm-hmm. in the body and it absorbs absolutely everything there is nothing that it expels except <sighs> except maybe acne or things like that when it has a bad reaction to the things you're either putting in your body mm-hmm. consuming or directly topical absolutely or i think also emotional is part of it emotional, like it's expen- yeah emotional too for sure mm-hmm. because i know i tend to break out and get some acne here and there um when so with deodorant, I, I noticed when I was using deodorant, like store-bought deodorant, yeah. I was having reactions. Like I was getting redness and like rashes like underneath my I arms. I think we and, talked about this. We did. Time out. Yeah. Have you... Okay, continue. Explain so to I them so they know. So I don't use deodorant anymore, actually. Thank you. So I, so I was going to say... So I don't use deodorant. I don't either. Yeah. And I'm, I'm on good. Like I really don't smell. If no, I, I do... No, I don't smell. Do I smell? No, no, no. I mean, I'll smell you from here. But usually if I ever do uh-huh. have a little bit of a scent, I'll put a little essential oil like around my shoulders. Yes, I do the same thing. Because the natural deodorants, uh-huh. Koa, would do exactly that to me. And yes. I talked to a friend yes. of mine where same thing happened. And it would rash uh-huh. and I would not like add all the it natural deodorants made out of like coconut oil and coconut oil, and but it would remember it also has essential oils. It has so essential oils it's very too. intense on the skin. So 
sometimes. Well, what you can do is you can put your own in a spritzer bottle. You can put your own Boom. essential oil and, yeah. and you smell great. Oops. You smell yeah. like lavender. You can smell yeah. like uh, you can smell like orange. You can yes. smell like copaiba if you want. You know, there's many different things out there. And so, yeah, I actually Thanks. stopped using oh, deodorant so almost a year that. ago. Yeah. I want to say maybe it's been around that, seven, eight, nine months for me uh-huh. maybe. Yeah. And I haven't had any issues. For and sure. then there'd be a time where... If I, I was going to go somewhere and I knew we were going to be maybe like mm-hmm. out or dancing and I was in a like sweat or a stuff, I put it and I would feel it the next day, Koa, yep. and it would be on fire. Yep, on fire. And it was clean yes, yes, and yes. good ingredients. Uh, no, no. I feel the Literally same way. I, you know what? I notice it, especially because I like to go to the beach and I like to swim a lot, mm-hmm. you know, as we live here. <laughs> beautiful place right by the beach. Heck yes. Um, thank you, South Florida. Hey. <laughs> hey. Uh, you know, I find that whenever I would go swimming in this salty water, it would burn my armpits mm. so badly and i'm like dude i'm using natural deodorant what is going on just because something is natural people does Doesn't not mean, it's, mean good. it's good for you i mean you have poisonous plants i can't stress it enough yeah absolutely it's yeah it's, that's awesome that you said that yeah a friend yeah, and yeah. i just <laughs> talked about that like a few weeks ago for sure, for and sure. she said the same exact thing definitely yeah i stopped wearing deodorant and i feel good and i don't smell i don't have bo and i think your body actually i think you have bo when when you eat shit, she's my. That's my when theory. When you eat shit, you that's smell. my. That's exactly my theory. When I kid you, you eat not. Shit, you smell like shit. Yeah. And Literally. I really, I really feel that. Like when you're eating fresh, leafy greens. You got nothing to detox. Fruit, what could you? How could that smell bad? And everything, all like leafy greens, smell amazing. Avocado fruits, they smell mm-hmm. amazing. They smell fresh and like mm-hmm. piney and fruity and citrusy. Like, Instead of dead shit and chemicals. Exactly. Literally. All those chemicals <laughs> that are processed in a lab, of course it's going to seep out your pores and smell like shit. Because it's not for your body and so your body is finding any yes. mechanism it can to emit it. And I remember, this was years ago, and a partner and I that were both into like heavily into nutrition, but there'd be times where you want to be human, right? You want to splurge. You want to have that brownie with ice cream dessert. That's at the restaurant. Like <laughs> screw it. Of course. I kid you not. Co. And this is, this was just one vivid thing that we both called out. Cause we mentioned it, but it was that specific time that right after we kind of like, we kind of smelled our armpits and we're like, <laughs> what the hell do your armpits smell i'm like yeah or like it's the goddamn dessert you like know, our body is telling us that shit was bad yet really tasted is. but it was a damn dessert i Go think up. the people that that smell so bad like the people that always reek of bo are the ones who like they're eating like shit yeah yeah and and or or not caring what they're putting in or on their body absolutely and you know i feel like it also it affects the way you look it affects your skin Mm, it affects everything everything. the way you're able to absorb things the rate your metabolism it has a direct effect on absolutely everything like your relationships in your life Mm. what you eat is related to how you are going to have relationships how you are going to perform in yes. life in all different areas. Your ability to have patience, to have uh-huh. forgiveness, to be able to listen consciously, sure. to be awake and present and listening to someone. A hundred percent, it trickles. Yeah. It's literally. If I'm that sitting umbrella. here tired, like just ate McDonald's, and I'm just like, you ain't, I, you're not gonna be participating. Uh, like I'm not participating. You're like tap me out. Tap me out. Mm-hmm. Like let, let me lay down. Please. Yes. I need to lay down and watch a movie. Because your body is dealing yes. with so much yes. shit inside. Uh-huh. Absolutely. On top of all the emotions that you're feeling, yes. the stress you're enduring, everything that you're going through, life's hardships that we all go through as human beings. <laughs> yeah, it's part so, of it. Exactly. So why not literally assist yourself mm-hmm. based off of the food? It, that's right. your toolbox. Right. Is that food? Obviously, there's things like meditation and working out, but food, I think, is the ultimate source. I think it's the ultimate, honestly. I, I love I love meditation. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer in meditation. I love yoga. I I love those moving practices. Mm-hmm. I love doing things that really rest the mind. Mm-hmm. I I really love that connectedness. Yes. But I agree with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I believe you could even you could if you choose not to do yoga, if you choose not to meditate, if you're going to do one thing, please Food. eat natural. Yes. Eat the right food. I can't stress it enough. Mm-hmm. It will fix your problems before you go to a doctor yes try switching your diet yep and that's somewhere where a majority of things come about your skin mm-hmm. your this your that sure it uh, your i mean people heal autoimmune diseases disorders from from eating food from switching 100%. their diet there are living breathing testimony out here from mm-hmm. from human beings just like us yeah that have healed themselves 
and you know from the Epstein's virus and and uh, different things that medical medium I'm not sure you're aware of medical yeah. medium yes. yeah and he's helped me so much when mm. I cut out uh, like eggs out of my diet and things that uh, that I was you know reading reading some of his book and his teachings and hmm. and seeing his things online really is just amazing because he basically preaches to eat raw whole natural foods and i think and i give you so much kudos for that because i don't think i mean i have that part of my diet because i'll do it through Mm -hmm. juices excuse me juices and fresh salads but there are times for me where i like hot food so sometimes i'm a person that likes my grilled veggies that likes soups or this so i've i know you said that before in an old Uh conversation and i'm like that's amazing but also kind of being that intuitive because i have that part where I at least get that dosage of that raw, but I also like to have that satiation, absolutely. soul satiation of that warmth in my food. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But I think that comes in part with go with what resonates with you. I think that's the hierarchy, really, in my opinion, that that's the best version Intuitive you can get. Eating. Yeah, but but I mean also doing more raw because you're not going through distorting the food through any heating process. Yes. So that is the ultimate meaning, preserving as much nutrients and vitamins as a food can have. Definitely. And I think a lot of people think that raw eating is just eating like salads and eating like a carrot stick. And don't get me wrong. Like I'm that guy. I eat kale out of the, like I will eat kale straight out of the stalk. I love celery. I love carrots. Like I love cucumber. I love all vegetables. I don't discriminate on vegetables. (laughs) Um, But I think for me, it just feels better in my body. Like it it literally feels cleaner. Yes. lighter and it feels lighter yes Yes. like i feel like my body is is able to metabolize it easier and it it is absolutely yeah but i feel like there's a lot of myth out there that says like eating raw is actually harder on your gut i think it can go different ways so i can't Mm -hmm. i can't 100 percent say one way or another based off of my knowledge to be completely honest with you um but i think again everything in balance do yep. it, but you don't have to do your full diet on that, and then balance it again. Intuitive easing. Absolutely. If it's telling you that, then you do it. Clearly, your body's more capable, maybe, than mine to process it, and hence why you crave it mm-hmm. more than I do. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. <laughs> oh man. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's really. <laughs> I think it's really good stuff, though, yes. that we're covering, and yes. you know, I've been wanting to do this for so long, yes. and I think it's just really good to to get it out there in a non biased, non judgmental way. Yes, and, yes, And having yes. come from both sides, too. Absolutely, exactly. I think exactly. that's the most important thing here is that I've been on both sides, and I know which one is better because everything is linked. Again, I believe that the foods, they're going to make you sick, mm-hmm. which will make you have to go to the doctor and get on pills, and everybody it's knows that. It's a vicious cycle. Big Pharma runs everything. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely yes. everything in this country, and uh, in the world, really. Mm. And... I think that we need to start standing up for ourselves, yes. for our own bodies and, you know, putting the, the best things into our body, treating our bodies like a temple. Of course, it's OK if you want to have, you know, uh, a glass of wine. I think it's just important to try to try to stick by an all natural diet. Yes, I agree. Every now need- and then we're mm-hmm. human at the end of the day. Sure. Enjoy yourself. Have your advice. Enjoy, enjoy. But overall, yes. as long as you have that bulk or p- percentage in that manner, yeah. then... Your, your body's going to know of how course. to cope. It's going to admit it. Of All these mechanisms of sweating, of acne, the body is there to protect you. And so you do something because you want to enjoy yourself that mm-hmm. night, do your thing. Your body is going to find a way to cope. It may suck that night sure. or the day after, but it's going to find a way to process it and have you move forward. I think that's the beautiful things of our body. But after 20, 30, 40, 50 years of that, then no, that's yeah. like, that's a point of no return mm-hmm. or medications or surgery or death from any of right. those illnesses. Well, there's metals and things that we're still metabolizing from years ago. Yes. Are, that's the thing that people don't understand mm-hmm. is like, yes, you're young now, but you could eat McDonald's or Taco Bell every single day for three years. But when you're in your 30s or 40s, it could finally start being metabolized. You know, your, your it body, it it's does. harsh. It's harsh. It's very harsh. Because it's constant toxins mm-hmm. day constant. after day, let alone, and you mentioned the thing about the skin and like, we'll, we'll add a couple of other points, whatever we want to do to add. So we don't like sure, rant sure. on you guys. Hmm. Um, but mentioning that the skin is the largest organ in the, in the body and how it literally absorbs everything is think about the, I mean, again, this is us being spoiled, right? Cause nothing's perfect. You look at other countries mm-hmm. that don't have water, but look at the water we're showering with Absolutely. that has so many heavy metals, toxins, hormones, 
hormones in, and our skin is absorbing that every right. day we shower. How can we escape it? You can. How do we? I mean, you can if you get. Uh, there's different filtration systems. Uh-huh. Um, if you want to get installed, if you have a house, you put it in your house. If you're renting, you're kind of screwed at that point. Um, same thing with the air. There's different filtrations. There's UV lights. There's on sure. uh, the water there's reverse osmosis there's so many different filtrations which again that's us being spoiled americans of course. of course um so be grateful for what we have but just to mention that you can't escape toxins mm-hmm. it is in the world we live in when we step out in the air we breathe Absolutely. but doing our best to fuel ourselves with these fuel this food and these supplements will help us cope and help protect our bodies in the midst of that absolutely so i think that's what it really boils down to and of course there's so many other techniques i know we're focused on food but i think that's ultimately the takeaway message is also what kind of what kind of life do you want to live what kind of quality of life do you want to live if you want to live a freaking amazing life then you got to take care of your vessel in my opinion otherwise at some point or another your body's gonna break and you're gonna be miserable Mm -hmm. and another thing too that i was really focused on before especially for women you know you see a lot of women take prenatal vitamins or all these things before they're ready to have a baby it's like you're not going to get ready for that baby within a year or two years after 20 30 40 years of of doing a massacre on your body you need to prepare for years so i think another mindful thing for women is if you do see procreation in your life start taking care of yourself now because then you're writing the history for that child you're mm-hmm. going to have as well. Absolutely. And you're passing that on to that yes. child. It's all code. It's yes. all in the DNA. Absolutely. Yes. Very well said, So, too. yeah. yeah Anything else we want to add, Koa? It's amazing. I think... I think... I think we a hit really, a lot. Yeah, we did hit a lot. I know it was a lot, guys. Sorry. It's, it's we're probably lot. everywhere. <laughs> and we could probably... Honestly, this could probably be a series in its own. Yeah, it we, we can definitely bring it back. Topics. Yeah, people And like dissect it. further. Definitely. I would love to dissect awesome. uh, with you more on different topics because this is just... I know it's fascinating to you yes. as it is for me. Yes. And... Yeah, I think health and nutrition is just an awesome thing. Mm. Whether or not you you want to exercise, if you're going to do anything for yourself today, for your body, eat something. Eat something good. Eat something mm-hmm. green. Eat something colorful. Invest in yourself. In, yeah, more it's than an anything. investment in your health. Your yes. health is your ultimate wealth. It's not about the money. It's not about mm-hmm. the material. It's about what you have here. Absolutely. And, and I think to to close that out, it's yeah. if you're if you're gonna pay, I personally would rather pay for it now then pay for it later in hospital bills because it's going to be spit out one way or another financially if we're looking at finances. Yeah. But being mindful, right? Being balanced. Splurge a little bit. Go support local. Shop at your local farmer's market. If you don't live in a place that's warm year round and you may not have watermelon and all the abundance of fruits that we have here, go to your grocery store and, and just... Do what you can. Start basic, yeah. Start exactly. basic. I'm not asking you to. Do the best. To, just do the best. I'm just not try. asking people to go to the farmer's market or, you know, or even shop organic. Yeah. But just, no, because I know, like, I've even sure. wondered, I'm like, am I being BS? Like, I don't even know what to believe because I used to do mm-hmm. everything organic. And I sure. really took a step back from that because I'm like, you know what? There's some things I do and there's some things Definitely. I don't. Like fresh fruits, I do more organic. Um, other things, I don't I do not do it. kind of. I kind of feel it out. But I think it's too much, especially for starters. Don't focus on just organic. I think that you're going to make a hole in your pocket. Just start where you can. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Definitely. Oh, I man. love that. I love that message. And thank you so, so much for, I've been waiting so long to come here. <laughs> I feel so honored to be here and I appreciate your time. Thank you as well, Co. Thank you for thank sharing you, thank your thank enlightenment, you. your mm-hmm. knowledge and stay tuned. We'll probably jump back in in a later episode and dive into another topic if anybody likes any specific topic within this realm let us know so that we can hyper focus on that next time right on yeah <laughs> we'll catch you guys in the next episode oh last thing they if do you want to be reached out via social yeah, media if sure. people have questions sure absolutely if anybody wants to reach out to me just to chat on anything it doesn't even need to be specifically food related but if you're <laughs> interested in me or anything uh my instagram is koasana dot vibes k-o-a-s-a-n-a dot vibes all right and you can find me on instagram i'm happy to share any knowledge and go back and forth have good conversation i'm always looking to learn new things and yeah i appreciate you guys right i'll on. put it down in the link as well so you guys have access to that and we'll go from there thank you blue you're welcome have a good one guys